Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at random forest with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now, what we're doing when we're dealing with uh, excuse me, random forest is we are, instead of making like one decision tree to try to classify something or to make a numeric prediction or regression, if you will, we are going to make many, 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 many trees. And then what happens is that each tree gets a vote to determine the, the final uh, classification or the final numeric prediction of whatever you're trying to figure out. So for example, in this video, we're going to be focusing on classification trying to figure out whether someone, a cancer patient is deceased or censored. We'll learn more about that in a second. And so what happens is, is that as you build the trees, each tree gets a vote, whether the person is censored or deceased, whatever the outcome was. And whichever particular classification has the most votes is the direction that the overall random forest uh, model, if you will, takes as its prediction for that particular uh, individual uh, instance or ex example, if you will. So in this first cell right here that you can see, we're going to be doing our data preparation. We're going to be using things like pandas, sklearn.ensemble, okay, pi data set, for, that's where our data comes from. Uh, line four here is going to be used for developing our train and our test set. And then, of course, we're going to have our metrics, and we're going to make a visualization at the end of this. So we're going to go ahead and just press control enter here, as you can see right there. And so now for our next step, we're going to actually load our data. So in this next cell right here, you can see that I'm using data. This comes from the Pi data set uh, library right here, or excuse me, module. And we're going to load the data set called cancer. And we're going to call this actual object DF. Now, in this second line right here, this line of code is going to tell you a little bit about the variables inside the actual cancer data set. So I press control enter and I get this output. So it gives you a description. It's talking about the survival of patient with advanced lung cancer at a particular lo location. And then uh, down here, we start learning about the variables. So status, sensor versus dead. So I'll talk about censored in a moment, but then we have age here, the gender or the sex, so EKLG performance and other important variables here. One that I want to mention also is time, like how long do they survive? How long do they live with the actual cancer, if you will? Now, down here at the bottom, I have a definition of censored um, because you know if you don't have a medical background like most of us. Uh, and so right here it says, a patient who did not have an event during a specific period are said to have censored observation. So in other words, I'm assuming here that basically if they did not die, they were a censored, <laughs> censored observation, if you will. So that's kind of where that comes from. So we're looking at people who during that time period died or people who did not have the event, who did not die during the period of the study. Now, let's take a look at the actual data set, if you will, take a peek at that. And so here's what it looks like. So you got the different instruments. Again, we looked at this time, their status, if you will. Status is either censored or of course dead, age, you know, their sex, etc. Now over here, if you can see this, I'll just make this nice and clear for you. You can see right here that we have some NAs in weight loss and also the number of calories in a meal, if you will. So random forest does not appreciate or like missing data. So we have to find a way to deal with that. There's lots and lots of different ways. But for our purposes, we're going to keep it very, very simple. This might not be the best way to do it, but how we will address it for the sake of a short video. And we're just going to drop them. So if you can see right here in this cell right here, I'm going to drop all the NAs. And now if we take another peek at the data set, you can see right there that there's no more missing data. Now, of course, our data set is much smaller but this is good enough for a video presentation. Now, we're still preparing our data. And so the next thing we have to do is, is we have to separate our independent variables from our dependent variable. Now remember, our goal here is classification. That is our goal. And so we're going to try to predict if someone is censored or dead based on the independent variables we're going to use. Now, watch the next cell here. 
in this cell right here, you can see that I am setting up my, you know, data frame, if you will, for my independent variables. So these are most of the independent variables in the study, as you can see right here. And we're going to use these. So that's good. So we're going to go ahead and load this. All right. Now we have to prepare our dependent variable. And so that's our next cell right here. I'm just going to paste this in and let me explain what I'm doing here. So we're instead of using the numbers one as centered and two as dead, what we're going to do here is we're going to re replace those with the actual text centered and dead, because that'll make it a little bit easier to interpret the output when we get to that. So the code to do that is data frame and inside data frame, we want the variable status because we're predicting the status. And then we're going to do df.status replace and it, wherever you see a one put censored. And for this next line of code, it's the same thing, but when you see a two put dead, and then we have an output of it down below. So we're going to do that. Don't worry about this error message. It does not affect your actual data. And so if I were to show you that real quick, just take a look at the Y. You can see right here, we have sensor, 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 dead, dead, et cetera, all the way through. All right, let's move on. So we have our X and our Y variable set up. And so essentially to make it as simple as possible is that I pretty much took most of the variables in the actual data set as my independent variables. And again, there's a shortcut where you don't have to type them by hand, but we're just gonna skip trying to teach everything. We just hard coded it. And we're going to use all these variables that you can see right here to try to predict the status of the, can of the, of the patients with the cancer. Now we have to split our data. And to split, split our data, this is uh, something you have to do when you're dealing with random forest, otherwise you get a perfect model. And that's not how it's gonna work in the real world. So generally there's different metrics for how much to split. We're going to split our data where, where we use 70% for the training and 30% for the test. Now there are other ways to approach this. Some, a lot of people now are using a validation set where you have a train validation and a test set. For simplicity, we're just gonna do a train and a test set. And so here's the code right here. So watch what's happening here. All this right here, I'm making multiple objects all at once. So these are all different objects. So I'm gonna have X train, so my independent variables for my training set. So I'm gonna take that data. Then I have my X test, independent variable with my test set. Then Y train and Y test. And so here, this little line right here is telling it what to do. Train test split, that's the name of the function. X is my independent variables, Y is my dependent, and then the test set is gonna be 30% of the data set. And then the random state, this is like the seed number, if you will, if you're more familiar with you know, RStudio or R. So set to zero. It helps to reproduce or replicate the same results every single time. So I press Control Enter. All right, now, I want to just show you what this looks like piece by piece. Let me see if I can make this clear for you so that you understand what just happened. So here we go. I press control enter here. Now, this first line of output here, this is the number of observations and the number of variables in my, my independent variable data set. So you can see I have 167 rows of data in that one. The second one is when I actually do my, set up my training set for my independent variables. So now you can see I took 116 of the 167 for that. And that's where this number down here at the bottom comes from, this 69%. 69% of the data comes, is in the training set, if you will. And this last number right here is 51. This is how many uh, observations have been set aside as the test set. And so again, like I just said, if you take 160, 116 divided by 167, you get 69.4%, which is pretty close to 70%. And that is what's happening. 116 rows of data have been set aside for me to train my random forest model, and 51 have been set aside for testing my random forest model. That's what's happening here. Now, moving on to model development. We're moving along here at a good speed. So here we go. The first thing is we kind of make an instance, if you will, of, oh, 
of our model. And so in this first line of code, we call our random forest classifier. Now, number of estimators, that's like how many trees do you wanna make? For the sake of this video, to keep it short, I just said, hey, make up to 100 different trees. And like I said, each tree gets a vote because we're doing classification, and then we will get our results in a few seconds. Once we have that set up, we actually fit our model in this next line of code, and notice how we are taking our independent variables, X train, and are also our dependent variable, Y train. Remember, we're trying to predict the status, whether a patient is censored or whether a patient is dead. That's what's happening here. So I just press control enter and you can see nothing, there's no output because there's a few more steps we have to do before we see something. But trust me, something happened. Now we have to predict. And so here's our next line of code. Right here. And so we're gonna use the predict function this time, but now we're using the test data set. So that's what we're, gonna, we're going to do right now. And we're gonna save this as something called y pred, y underscore pred, that often means y prediction. We're trying to predict the y, remember status. So I press control enter. Now we're gonna start getting some good, out, uh, some output if you will. So first we're gonna start with our confusion matrix. All right. So here we go. So in our, our model seems to be fairly accurate. And so you can see here that people who were dead and were predicted as dead, that was 31, that was pretty high. People who were censored and really were censored was over here, that's also pretty good. We did have some problems, if you will, with, let's see here. Sometimes we made some mistakes here. You know, they were censored but predicted dead, or they were dead and predicted censored. So we had some issues there. But generally, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, well, again, how good or bad it is depends on the context. Would a, would a medical doctor be satisfied with this? That's a separate question. Now, for our next piece of information, we're gonna take a look at some metrics here besides just the confusion matrix. So here we go. Okay, so we got our precision, recall, and F1 score. Again, we, we don't have time to define precision recall. That would make the video even longer. But you can see precision and recall seem to be uh, reasonably well when predicting dead, but not so good for censored. And also the overall average is around 73, 71% in terms of the accuracy here. So 73%, you can see that right here. And then we have the F1 score. So again, we're very, very strong at making predictions about whether a patient is dead, but we're not so good at making predictions when a, when a patient is censored. In other words, when a patient did not have an, an event during the time of the study, which is prob probably meaning we're not very good at predicting when someone lived. <laughs> That's kind of what it means. Now, for our, our last trick, we're getting closer and closer here to the end. We're gonna take a look at variable importance. And variable importance tells you like, basically how important a particular variable was in shaping the random forest classifier, which variables are the most important, if you will. So we just put this line of code here. <clears throat> now this is a little bit more complicated, but essentially we're going to make a plot and we're going to use um, this right here, feature importance. Feature is another name for variable. And we're going to, of course, use the name function here and, and get the, the, the name of the different columns. A lot of this is just for making the visualization. And we're going to sort the values. So ascending, so the, the, the most important variable will be at the top. That's what's happening. Whoops. Let's go back here. And then after that, we make our, our this is more for the visualization. So let's go ahead and run this. So you can see right here, it's clearly that time is probably the most important, is the most important variable. And in the, the context of the study, time was like how long they survived with cancer. So obviously the, the longer you survive, the less likely you are to have been dead, if you will. Our other important ones is weight loss. How much weight did they lose? How many, how many calories they were eating per meal, their age, etc. 
And so these are all the most, these are all the variables that were in the study, and I mean independent variables, and their particular value. So that's kind of how this works. So in this video, what we did was so that we had an experience in which we took a look at how to use random forest in the context of, of course, the Python programming language. And so what we did was is that we took the data set cancer and we were trying to predict uh, whether somebody was censored or, or dead based on the other variables that were, that were available in the study. And so we, we cleaned the data first a little bit, made some modifications to the data, we set up our model, we trained our model after we did our train test split, and then of course after that we tested our model and we got back some metrics that indicated the actual performance of the model, which is about 73%. Now the model struggled with trying to predict the outcome when somebody was censored, but was much stronger at predicting the outcome when somebody was you know, dead. And this last picture right here is a visualization that allows you to see which uh, variables had the most impact in making the classification. So I wanna thank you for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.